In this part, we're going to backtest the performance of a pairs trading strategy on GLD and GDX. So in this case, GLD is an asset that represents the spot price of gold, and then GDX is a basket of gold mining stocks. So you would naturally expect their returns to be highly correlated with each other. We're not going to prove that they are in this video. That could be a topic for another video. But for now, just kind of assume that these are related assets, and it's natural to think that they're a good candidate for a pairs trading strategy. So if you're not familiar with pairs trading, I'll review it very quickly. But the basic idea is, like I said, the returns of these two assets should be highly correlated. So when they diverge, when there's a spread between them that grows large, we're going to bet on their convergence. In other words, if GLD goes up by a lot and GDX goes down by a lot, we are going to long GDX and short GLD and bet that they are going to converge in the near future. This is a lot like betting on the meaner version of the synthetic pair GLD GDX, if that makes sense. So again, if the spread is positive, which means GLD is very large and GDX has gone up recently and GDX has gone down recently, we are going to short the synthetic pair. We're going to short GLD and go long GDX and vice versa. If the spread is very negative, then we're going to go long GLD and short GDX. So again, the idea here is basically betting on meaner version. In the book, he uses the date May 23rd, 2006 at uh, November 30th, 2007, which is obviously a long time ago. For this example, I'm going to stick with these first just to reproduce his you know, numbers, but then we can redo it with a longer period of performance. And I've defined these start dates up here and end dates so we can easily tweak them and just rerun the whole, the whole set of L's. So the first thing we want to do is actually get our data, right? We're just going to download GLD and GDX from the start date to the end date. Then we're going to pull off the adjusted close values and drop the null values. So if we do this here, you can see, again, we have our, our data. It has 384 rows and our two columns for our two assets. And the first thing we want to do is determine the optimal hedge ratio. So that is when we go long one, let's say we go long GDX, how much of GLD should we go short according to the historical data? You could do this one-to-one, -one, but that might not be optimal. So what we're going to do is actually train a linear regression to determine what the optimal relationship is between them. So the way we're going to do that is first we'll import stats models to get access to its linear regression, uh, its ordinary least squares model. And we are going to first hold out a training set. So if you're familiar with machine learning, you always want to train your model on a training set. And then you can evaluate it on a testing set. So this is going to be a subset of the data. And specifically, it's going to be the first 252 rows. 252 is the number of trading days in a year. So this is effectively going to take yeah, our first year's worth of trading data and then train the model on it. And then the test data will be everything that's left over. Here, we're going to define our X uh, variable as GDX and our Y variable as GLD. And here again, we're just going to filter it down to the train set value. So again, this will just be 252 values. Then we can define the ordinary least squares model just using stats models. We pass it in the Y and the X training data, and then we fit it to the data and we get our results. So based on this, we get our hedge ratio of 1.8. So again, what that means is the ratio between our X data, right, which is GDX, and our Y data, GLD, is 1.8. And we can actually see a summary of the results down here just to see how good the fit was and, and what we got. So again, we have our coefficients, we have our standard deviation, and you also see that we have our R squared here. That's probably the most interesting thing to look at, which is very high. It's close to one, which means that this model is a good fit to the data. If we scroll down here, we can actually see it visually. So I've created first a scatter plot between our X training data and our Y training, Y training data. And then I've also created a line plot from our, you know, our assumed hedge ratio from the, from the linear regression. So what we can see here on the plot and this, the rest of this code is just going to add some labels and, and titles is the scatter plot here. All these points are our raw data, right? It's just the correlation or the, the relationship between GDX and GLD. And then this red line here is the line that we fit. And you can actually see the equation here, Y is equal to 1.88 X. And you can see that it is a very good linear fit between this model. So we, we seem to have a very good model of the data. Now that we have our hedge ratio, we're going to calculate the spread and then basically simulate what the trading strategy will look like. So the spread between them is going to be equal to GLD minus GDX. And then obviously we are going to multiply GDX by the hedge ratio that we just decided or just evaluated. Then here we can actually plot out what this spread looks like if it was an asset itself. So again, this is kind of like creating a synthetic asset GLD to GDX. And we can plot this out and we'll actually plot out for both the train set and the test set. So the blue line is going to be the train and then the orange line is going to be the out of sample test set. We also can calculate the mean of this spread. And we see that it's around 5% throughout the duration of the period here. If we look at this chart, we can see that the spread does look very mean reverting, which is the most important thing to see here, right? We have zero in the middle, and then it's just kind of this oscillating line. And that's what we want, right? Because our, our trading strategy is going to bet on mean reversion. So if I come down here, I actually have kind of a separate function here that's going to allow us to look at the spread over different two-year periods. Right now, obviously, the data is only there for 2007, uh, or from 2006 to 2007. So we'll come back to this later, and we'll populate this when we look at the analysis over the entire period up to today. But moving along, we can also do, in addition to our mean, we can look at the standard deviation. So basically see like how much risk there would be associated with the uh, or with the, how much volatility there is in the synthetic. And we get a 1.94 value. This again matches the book. And then now we can actually go ahead and translate this into positions, a hypothetical trading strategy that is going to form our backtest. So the first thing we're going to do is actually transform the raw spread signal into its z-score. So if you're not familiar with z-scoring, it's a technique that's basically going to normalize or center the data around its mean. So all you're going to do is take the spread and then subtract its mean and then divide it by the standard deviation. And that makes it more central. This is a very common thing to do when you're doing any sort of scoring. It just makes the data a little bit more stable. And that's maybe a good topic for a later time what the benefits of z-scoring are. But just keep in mind, this is a simple linear transformation of the data. It doesn't really affect the signal any way except for making it a little bit more, more stable to use. And what we're going to do is actually define our positions in the data frame itself. So you'll see here that we define four columns, GLD long, GDX long, GLD short, and GDX short. And what we can do is actually assign these in this code here. So let's let's walk through this kind of slowly just to understand what's happening. So here, this first condition before the comma in each of these lines 
is the condition that we are going to use to make a trading decision, basically. So whenever our z-score signal is greater than or equal to two, then we are going to go short the spread. And the way we'll do that, or the way we'll kind of indicate that is by saying, okay, we're short the spread, then uh, we're going to go short GLD and, uh, or, yeah, and long GDX. And we represent those long and short positions with just simple negative one or one, right? It's really not too hard to understand. Uh, and then vice versa, right? When the spread is very negative, then we are going to go long GLD and or we're going to go long the spread and we are effectively going to go long GLD by doing that and a short GDX. Then we also have our exit criteria, right? When the uh, Z-score dips below one, then we are going to exit the short spread and then vice versa. So these are our entry criteria and these are our exit criteria. Lastly, we can make sure that any existing position is carried forward until there's an exit signal. Let's just make sure, you know, we don't over trade or anything like that. And we can see the resulting data frame down here. So we have all of our long positions and short positions just represented in a very binary format. And what we can actually do is just combine these, right? So we can, we can take our long and our short and then add them up into, you know, one, one new array and then create a data frame out of that. And we have it here. So now on each day, we have what our effective positioning is. And this is our back test, right? Like now we have some kind of trading strategy here. Then if we go down here, we can actually calculate our daily returns, our PNL and our sharp. This isn't too hard to understand, especially given the previous examples, but you know, we just look at the percent change in terms of price. Um, and then we calculate our PNL by looking at the price at times our positions, right? Not too hard. And then for the sharp, we already saw this calculation. Uh, it's just going to be the mean of our PNL divided by the standard deviation of our PNL times uh, square root of 252 to annualize it. And you can see here that our sharp in the training set is quite good. This is an over two sharp. So this is a very attractive strategy based on the training set, but that's the training set, right? Obviously we, we optimized our parameters for that data and we need to see how it works out of sample. So here we're gonna look at our sharp in the testing set. And you can see here that now I should have highlighted this before, but before we were indexing our PNL array by the train set value, right? Now we're going to index it by the test set value. So this is going to look at those values that are out of sample effectively. And you can see here that we still do have a sharp in our test set of 1.5, which is still pretty good. Uh, and actually down here, we can plot our PNL. So this is kind of our, our simulated PNL chart. And you can see that it does have a net expected positive PNL in theory between this period, it would make money. So that is the extent of the pairs trading strategy and kind of how you would back that. I'm gonna go back to the top now and show you what happens when we, when we expand it out because unfortunately these results don't seem to hold very well over a longer period of time. So what I'll do, I'll actually just eliminate the start and the end date. So we get the entire history of that we can. So if I do this, now our data set starts back in 2006, again, basically the same start date, but the end date goes all the way up to 2024. Uh, and we are, yeah, this is basically today's date. So we have 4,608 rows and we can repeat the process. Now, one thing to consider here is our train set is only using the first 252 values, right? It's only using the, the values for 2006. So we might want to change the training set to be a larger amount of data, depending on what we use. For now, I'm going to keep it the same just for the sake of not changing too much at once. There's a couple different hyperparameters here that we can always observe and we can basically see, you know, maybe a different subset of years or a different duration. But for now, let's just see how this generalizes if we were to just use the first year and not do anything since then. So you would expect the rest of this to basically be the same because it, I mean, this hasn't changed. But now when we look at the spread over time, you can see this blue line here is our first year and then the orange is all of the rest of it. So while the spread does look pretty noisy, it definitely has some periods where it's kind of trending up, right? It actually seems to have a pretty strong upward drift here. So it's a little bit alarming to us because we are, again, you know, we, we are interested in mostly betting on mean reversion. We, we kind of want it to look just like a noisy signal throughout the entire period if it was really a stable thread, but it's not a big deal. So let's actually look at how we can plot the spreads across all of the years and we can kind of get a sense for it. So here, I'm not going to go too much into this function. It's mostly just plotting code. Uh, we kind of iterate over, you know, every two year period. And then most of this is just, you know, setting the labels and you know, the axes and, and making it all look nice, but nothing too complicated there. But really what I want to show you here is over the different two-year periods, the mean reversion nature of this, of this spread kind of varies a lot. So 2006, 2007 does look good, uh, but then in the next year, 2008, 2009, we definitely see a bit of a trend and you can see it kind of similarly here with, you know, 2010, 2011, moving forward, you know, there's some years where it does look good also, right? 2014 to 2015, every single one of these is very noisy, I would say, and, and looks like it definitely has some, you know, mean reversion style nature to it, but there are definitely going to be years where this would have performed better or worse. You know, these, these look like bad years. This looks like a good year and so on. So now if we look at the standard deviation of the spread, and I should have called out the mean as well. So in this particular case, this is the mean on the training set. So it will be the same anyway, but the mean and the standard deviation here are both on the training set. So they're going to be the same. Let's actually look at our positioning and ultimately how the strategy performs. So again, all this code just works as it was. We've just changed the length of the input data. And then now we can actually look at the sharp the sharp on the training set. Again, it's going to be the same because we haven't changed that, but the sharp on the testing set goes down by a lot. Um, it's down to 0 0.03 and our PNL uh, does not look as good, right? And the reason for this, you might argue is, well, you know, we're, we're fitting our least squares, you know, fit here on just the first year of data. And we are trading over the next, I don't even know, like 15, 20 years of data, right? So we might need to change that parameter. So let's actually go up and see, you know, maybe, maybe it's better to use the first four years of data and, and assess the fit here. So I'm going to do 252 times four. And now you see right away, we get a new hedge ratio, right? We get 2.29. So it changes things. Run it all again. Now we can see our spread. I mean, it still looks like a decent fit. If we look at our R squared here, it does go down to 0 0.96. And yeah, I mean, the data is clearly not as linear as it was before, um, or not as easily modeled, but it's still decent, right? You still see kind of like a nice, uh, kind of a, a you know, ovalish spread between these things here. If we look at the spread now, 
Again, it's kind of what you would, you know, you saw before. And then let's go down and actually, oh, and actually I should, I should talk about the mean, right? Because the mean is going to change. Now the spread mean has gone up to 0.91 and the uh, deviation has gone up to 15, uh, which is much higher. Um, but the mean has also gone up by quite a lot. Um, and yeah, we can basically just, you know, repeat the process. And we see now that our sharp in the training set is 0.52. So it's gone down dramatically. And our sharp in the test set uh, has actually, I think it's, I mean, I think it's gone down, but it's now a 0.01, right? So it's, it's near a zero sharp. Uh, we look at this again in the test set and the PNL is, is mostly negative. So my point here is the parameters you choose are going to vary the effectiveness of a strategy quite a bit. And while I think this is more of, you know, an example case rather than a practical asset that you might want to trade or a practical pair that you might want to trade, it's really about the dates that you choose and the parameters that you choose and all of these different details that are going to make or break the strategy. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I know we covered kind of a lot here, including, you know, fitting a regression model, uh, you know, doing all these charts, doing the train test, train test set split, and then actually simulating these positions here, all using a data frame, right? All of this is just using vanilla pandas and a little bit of NumPy. But yeah, that's, that's it for this example here. Thanks for watching.